So have you ever been somewhere immediately after entering the place or after being there for a little while, you concluded to yourself, and maybe you said this phrase out loud or you said it in your mind, you used this phrase and it said something like this, I don't feel safe here. Anybody ever have a moment like that in their lives? Or maybe you can recount a place in your mind where you've been to that place or been with those people and it was like, I just, I don't feel safe here. I think many of us, if we're honest, can go back in times and remember those places for ourselves, and we have promised ourselves to never go back there because of how it made us feel in those moments. I remember for me, a few months ago, I had this encounter. Uh, My wife and I, uh, we have two boys, and we decided we were going to go to a restaurant with our two boys, which is uh, quite a challenge in and of itself when your kids are young and toddlers. You really got to be selective about where you choose to go to a restaurant. So we found this really eclectic place uh, about 20 minutes away, and we go to visit this place, and uh, there's antiques everywhere, which I'm like, oh, no, you know, like, they don't know what our toddler's about to do to this place, and it was really fun, and we've always gotten takeout there, but this is the first time, like, we took it to the next level. And we're like, we're actually going to sit down and eat here with our kids. And everything was going great. Uh, The food was delicious. Our kids actually behaved and stayed in the booth that we were eating at. And all is well. And then we go to finish the meal. We're about to pay. And I was like, you know what? Probably should use the restroom before I leave because we got a nice little ride home. So I find my way back to the back of the restaurant and I find where the bathroom is. And needless to say, it wasn't much of a bathroom there. I mean, if you remember like an old like telephone booth, this is how small this bathroom was. It was maybe like three feet by three feet and you had to climb up these stairs on both sides to find your restroom. And I was like, well, this is interesting. Well, I guess I got to go. So when you got to go, you got to go, right? So I make my way up to the restroom and I shut the door and it's really kind of tight in there. And so I use the bathroom and I go to wash my hands. And as I'm making my way out of the bathroom, this is when panic sets in because I go to turn the doorknob and realize the doorknob is not turning with my hand. And I'm like, oh no, I am now locked in the world's smallest bathroom by myself. So I'm like, okay, Trey, don't panic, it's okay. So I reach in my pocket to get my phone. Guess what? Left my phone at the table. And I'm like, okay, don't panic. Maybe you just turned it wrong. So I I go to turn it again. Definitely still not moving. This is when full like sweaty, awkward taco pits come in, right? I'm like, oh no. I'm stuck in this bathroom by myself, and this is where I'm going to die, right? I'm going to worst case scenario that I'm never going to make it out of this bathroom. I get really dramatic about it. And so what else do you do in those moments? You just just go all out, right? So I start going on the door as hard as I can. And then finally I start screaming, let me out, let me out. And I'm banging this door. And I know it's a small restaurant. The entire restaurant has got to hear me at this point. And so this nice kind old lady walks out of the women's restroom and hears me in sheer panic and opens the door for me. And I don't know what it was like for her seeing my face as she opened that door, but it was like Christmas time for me, right? I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. You saved my life. And she's like, dude, I just opened the door for you. I'm like, no, listen, I was going to die in there and you opened it and now I'm alive and and we're like best friends now, right? Like, can we hug? No, that's weird. Okay, cool. And she's like, oh my gosh, get me away from this crazy man, right? It's just this awkward moment, but I was so thankful to be out of there. I grabbed my wife and kids. We were out of that restaurant and I remember telling my wife, I'm like, we are never going back there again. And she's like, Trey, you're being dramatic. I'm like, you weren't in there. I was never claustrophobic until that moment, right? And, and isn't it funny, like, when we have moments like this, that we, that we go to those extremes and we say, like, I never want to experience that again, or I never want that kind of feeling in my life again. All of us, when we go back to those experiences of places that we don't feel safe or that were uncomfortable for us, we draw boundaries, we create distance, and we say, this is no longer for me. Now, maybe yours wasn't getting locked in the world's smallest bathroom, but maybe you've had moments like that as well. And maybe there's been places where you're like, I felt unsafe and I never want to experience that again. And you may be wondering, where is this going today? What does this have to do with our conversation today? 
Well, we're going to continue on a journey that we started last week by looking at the last book of our summer series. And if you're just joining us for the first time today, this summer, we've been looking at three books that have helped us kind of understand more about our lives and and more about God. And as we explored those things, we're learning how to put those things into practice so that our lives can get better. And the last book we're in is this book called Find Your People by a lady named Jenny Allen. And this is one of the books my wife and I read um, in the spring, and it really helped us understand some things that we, we knew that were missing, but we didn't quite know how to put our finger on it. And I love the subtitle, Building Deep Community in a Lonely World, because I think all of us have had moments recently where we have found ourselves lonely, and we've been looking for people that could come into our lives in order for our lives to be more complete, be more full and be better. And so that's what we're going to explore today as we continue this conversation together. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Trey. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And I'm just so glad whether you're here in Mechanicsville, out at Scottsville, or watching online that you've decided today to entrust us with your church experience. And if this is your first time, thank you so much for being with us today. And I hope today that you find something encouraging or inspiring or helpful to your life and your faith journey while you're with us over the next few moments. And so as we jump into our topic today, let's real quick look back at where we started last week. We talked about this idea, if we're gonna find real, deep and authentic community, the first thing that we need in our lives is we have to choose close. We have to learn to choose close again. This is this idea of allowing people back into our lives. Instead of putting barriers up between us and others, We choose proximity. We choose to put ourselves around other people again because we know that it's important for us to be in community with others. That when we're isolated, when we're alone, when we're by ourselves, that those things are maybe good for a little while, but but they don't lead us to the lasting things that we want to find in our lives. And they don't make our lives better. But people do. People help us get better. But the barrier to this was busyness. And we always use that excuse all the time, right? We're just so busy. And we talked about that last week. We make times for things that are important to us. And if we realize how important relationships are to us, we will make the time for them again. And that's our prayer over the next few weeks as we explore this series together. Today, as we jump into our next topic together in this book, we're going to look at a word that keeps many of us from experiencing this idea of true friendship and true authentic community. It's a word actually we use around here at Atlee a lot, and you've probably used it in your life as well because it's important to us as a church, and it's important to you all as well. And this idea is a safe place. Everybody say safe. Safe. We all want a place that is safe to experience people and to experience God. The goal in this is to be transparent, to have a place of transparency where we feel safe to share some of life's most sacred things. Because you and I, we we don't wanna be around people sometimes because sometimes it doesn't feel safe or we don't feel like we can trust that person or this person. And the barrier to experiencing transparency is pain and shame. You and I, we've all had life happen to us. And so many of us, we hold back from transparency and we hold back from community because of the idea that we don't want any more pain or shame in our lives. We all need a safe place to share, to listen, to be helped, and to help others. And here's the thing. We all want a safe place to experience the community that God wants to put in our lives. But you and I, We don't even know if that's possible sometimes because of the hurt of the past that we've experienced. You and I have all been hurt. We've been betrayed. We have felt shame and guilt from others. And because of those past wounds, they cause us not to trust people anymore or to put ourselves out there. But the problem is, is that we miss out on some of life's most important things. And that is other people. You need people and I need people in order for our lives to be better. Last week, we looked at this verse at the origin story of creation, where God creates everything in the book of Genesis. And then he tells us as he created things that that he added more humans because he didn't want man to be alone. 
He said, it's actually bad for man to be alone. I'm going to give man a helper. And from that, we see different people come together. These communities are created. These nations are formed. And you and I are part of that history. But we realize that it's not good for us to be alone. Other people are important to us. The problem is, though, is that you and I, because of our past, because of our pain, and because of our shame, because of things that have been done to us or we've done to others, it causes us to miss out on community. And here's what ends up happening in our lives. I don't know if you found this to be true in your life, but when we have things in our past that, that come our way, we tend to start building walls to push those things away from our lives. We push things away that we don't want to harm us anymore. And you and I, brick by brick, we start building these walls to keep harm out. And so you and I are really good at this, whether we realize it or not. And this has been going on in our lives because of all the things that we struggle with and been through. And I don't know what your walls look like this morning, but we all have them. It's just choosing to admit that they're there is the thing that you and I need to be real with. And we need to understand that these walls, while we think they are helpful, if we're like, man, let's keep building it taller, let's keep putting people out. If we can build these walls, nobody can get in, nobody can hurt me, no one can harm me. I am out of harm's way because of the walls that I have built. And we think that we are safe because of the walls we've created. The problem is though, is that while it may feel safe for a short bit of time, these walls, start to cause more harm than they do good because they keep out the things that our lives so desperately need. And while it keeps the hurt out and the past out, the problem is, is that it only lasts for a little bit and then our lives do not get the nutrients that they need to survive the best way that they can. You and I, we keep things out for a reason, but the problem is, is that we need to realize that our lives need the things that we're keeping out. And so what if today we could take a moment to be honest about the walls that we've created, to diagnose them for what they really are? What walls have you put up to God and said, God, I do not wanna let you into those places anymore? And what walls, because of maybe you've had broken trust in your life, you've had people hurt you, you've had things happen where you're like, listen, I don't want that in my life again. The problem is, is that we need it. We need God and we need other people in our lives in order for our lives to be full, healed, and whole. These walls, while we think that they're doing good, they're doing more harm than we could ever realize to our souls. And so today, what walls in your life need to come down to experience the life that God really wants you to have? to stop shutting people out and start letting people in brick by brick. And today that's what we're gonna talk about as we explore how to tear these walls down to experience real friendship and life with others again. And this problem of building walls didn't just start with us. It actually goes back to the first humans. Like we talked about last week, the idea that when God created man and woman, he said, it's not good for you to be alone. Well, then we see some sort of things unfold after that moment that happened in these early people's lives. It's found in Genesis 3, 7 through 10. God had created these boundaries for them. And quickly, they were fooled into thinking that they could play God and, and break out of these boundaries. And when they did, they got to see the consequences of these things of living outside of God's will. Here's what it says, Genesis 3, 7 through 10. It says, at that moment, when things had happened, sin had happened and entered the world, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame. Everybody say shame. They felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves up. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and the wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. When the Lord God called to the man, he says, where are you? And man replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. And see, isn't that like our sinful human nature? Is that 
when we experience shame, we experience pain, when things come into our lives that we don't understand or we don't like, we hide. We create walls. And we say, do not let those things in. And we see this in first humankind because this is the idea when sin entered the world and entered their lives, it caused them to pull away from God and to hide because of what they experienced. And you and I, if we're honest, we do the same things, don't we? We hide. We put up walls because we don't want to let those things in any longer. And I love how God asked them this question, where are you? And it wasn't because God didn't know where they were, right? Like God sees everything. He knew exactly where they were. The question wasn't for God to answer. It was for Adam and Eve to answer. And the same question is true for you and I today. Where are you? Where have you been hiding? What walls have you created that are hindering your life more than you ever would realize? Today, where are you? But also, where do you want to be? I think for a lot of us, we can identify the areas that are just not working in our lives. And God simply wants to remind us today to, to stop hiding, to come out of our pain and shame, and to address the walls that we're facing today so that we can live a better life and a better story. You and I, we hide because of our pain and shame. That's why we're hiding today, right? We're hiding, we're building walls because of our pain and shame. The problem is though, is that we cannot allow our past pain to keep us from God's promises. You can't allow your pain and I can't allow my pain to hinder us from the promises and the people that God wants to put in our lives. God showed us that even in our hiding, he comes after us because he cares about us and he doesn't want us to stay in that hidden place. So no matter what your pain may look like this morning, I love what Jenny Allen writes in the book. She says, vulnerability is the soil for intimacy and what waters intimacy is tears. See, we don't wanna hear that, right? Because on this earth, we're gonna face all kinds of trouble, all kinds of things that come in and hurt our lives and are not good for our lives. But instead of hiding from those things or hiding behind those things, instead of building walls, what if we just address them for what they were? And we actually start to work on those things so that our lives could get better instead of just pretending that the issues aren't there. Our tears, our feelings, our things going on are never easy to share because we don't want people to know those areas in our lives that are going wrong. And maybe you've used one of these phrases recently that tell you that you're in hiding. Let me read these phrases and see if any of these are relatable to you, if you share these in any capacity in the past. Phrases that keep us from hiding sound like this. I have a hard time trusting people. Or maybe I'm unable to let go of old friendships that hurt me. Or maybe we said something like this, I've been rejected so much in the past. Maybe you say something like this, I feel like a burden, so I just choose not to share with others. Or maybe you say, I feel like I have to pretend that I'm okay or I'll be judged. Any of these phrases relatable to your life? I know I've used a few in my life over the last few months and years. It's because I don't want to be hurt. I don't want people to come into my life and, and go back to some of the mistrust and things that have happened. I, I want to keep those things out, but I know at the same time, if I don't learn to trust again, if I don't learn to let people into my life, my life can't get better. And so today, I don't know what excuses you've been making or what things have created walls in your life, but I just want to look at a few things today that would help us tear down these walls brick by brick so that we can experience the life that God wants us to have. And so we're gonna look at a Bible story from a guy named James. And this is a, a very short passage, but it's one of those that packs a lot of punch. It's kind of like one of those Capri Suns that has all the sugar in it, right? It's like, it just hits you where you need to be, all right? So hopefully it'll wake you up this morning to wake me up to realize the people that we need in our lives. James 5, 16, this is what he tells us about allowing people in our lives and what it should look like. 
He says this, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Everybody say healed. Oh, that was weak. Let's say it again. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Just making sure you're awake. I know it's Labor Day weekend, but we got to stay engaged here. <laughs> they, they, you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. And so looking at these words of wisdom that James outlines for us, I want us to look at some ways in which we can take that passage and directly apply it to our lives and what James instructs us to do and look at some tenets from Jenny's book to help us rediscover community and friendships again. And the first thing that's outlined in Jenny's book and that we take directly from this passage is this. In order to be fully loved, it requires us to be fully known. In order for us to figure out how to be fully loved, it requires for us to figure out how to be fully known. And James is my kind of man because I like people who shoot it straight, right? I don't want to guess what you're thinking all the time. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're feeling. And this is what James does. He just like shoots it straight at you. He's like, you know what? Here's what I want you to do. If you're really going to connect with people and connect with God on a deeper level, like go to them and like confess all your worst sins, It's like, James, have you lost your mind? I ain't telling a bunch of strangers I don't know all the deepest, darkest secrets of my life. And he's like, well, you know, just go to them and tell them all the things that are going wrong in your life and let them pray for you. And it's like, James, I don't know them like that. I'm not doing that. That's good for you and your life. But but for me, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what my past looks like. You don't know what people have done to me and I've done to other people. And I think James would simply respond to us by saying, well, keep living the way you're living then. Keep doing the things that you're doing. And I think many of us would say those those things are not working. But he says this, if we were to try those things, the byproduct is simple, is that you and I would begin to experience life in a deeper way. He says the byproducts of doing this are powerful and it produces wonderful results. I know for me, that's what I would want for my friendships in my life. That's what I desire for community and people in my life. Something that is powerful and produces wonderful results. And so how do we get there? How do we get better? We have to choose to let other people in to get the help that we need. In other words, the best way to say this would be people can't fully help you until they really know you. People can't fully help you until they really get to know you. And a lot of us, we put up walls, we, we pretend like everything's good, like we're great, say hi to everybody, keep everybody at arm's length, we don't wanna let people in. And eventually it's not hurting them, who's it hurting? It's hurting you and it's hurting me because that's not how we were designed by our creator to live. When we find the strength and courage to tear down these walls in our lives and fully let people into our lives, that's when full healing and transparency can take place. But the more you keep faking it, the more you keep pretending like you're good and everything's fine, the more you keep pretending like you can do it by yourself, you don't need others, you don't need God, true change can't take place. Maybe you'll experience a little bit of it, but it's when we fully let down those walls and let other people and God in, that's when James says, that's when that true healing can take place. Which leads me to the next big thought of the book that you and I have to discover if we're going to put this into practice is that you and I have to find our safe place. We have to find a safe place. You and I have to go after those places again. James talks about the idea of each other. We have to find our each other. Now, I don't want you literally to leave church today and go to the local coffee shop and be like, hey, listen, you're my safe place. Let me share all my deepest, darkest secrets with you, right? That would be really awkward for the people that are in the coffee shop and for you, right? Like you'd probably never be invited to that coffee shop again. So finding our safe place, we have to be very delicate about it. We can't be overbearing and we can't just think everywhere is our safe place. Last week, we talked about the idea of putting the close people in our lives and then our village and then our acquaintances. This is reserved for those close-knit people in your life. 
you have to have those people that you can go to and that they can come to you. And last week, I, I challenged you with the idea of start paying attention to the people that God puts in your life. When you go to school this week, for some of you, pay attention to the people that God puts in your, in your life, in your week, in your classrooms. For some of us, when you go to work on Tuesday, pay attention to those people that maybe God is trying to put in your life. When you come into church, don't just come and sit down. Look around. Who is God wanting to put in your life to help you get through what you're going through? And not just for you, but maybe you could be of help to them. So you never know who God wants to put in your life. This is why I loved Eric talked about small groups. Um, Next week, we start signing up for our uh, yearly small groups for the fall that we start. And this is a great time and a safe place that we say at Atlee every week for you to get to know people right here in our community. And for you to maybe try on sharing and getting around other people and learning more about God and learning more about yourself. And that's a great safe place for you to try on some of the things that we've been talking about together in this series. But maybe you're not ready for that yet. I think my biggest advice for you leaving here today is find one safe person that you feel like you can trust the most at this point in your life and allow yourself just for a moment to open up to that person. Share something that's been going on in your life and maybe start small. Start with something and see if you can trust them. Maybe with your wall, take out just a small brick and begin to share it. And then another brick and then another brick until you find a place that is safe for you to continue to share. And as you continue to open up, you have to allow others to come into your life to help you, to offer advice. Like James said, to pray for you, to be there for you. And once you do this, you'll start to feel why God truly wants us to live in community with each other. Because we are truly better together. Like you're good by yourself sometimes, right? Like you can get through a few days, a few weeks, all that. But it comes a point in our lives where we desperately know that we need other people. And when we find those moments, it's so important for us to go after them. And lastly, I think the big advice that James gives to us today in context of other people is this, is that we have to throw open the doors. We have to fully throw open the doors allow ourselves to fully open up. This by far is the hardest part of this whole conversation, but it's the most important and it's the most freeing when we do it. It's always so hard to open up and be vulnerable and talk to people that you, you know, don't trust like that yet or that you don't know that well. But once you do it and you're just honest for a moment, that's when true healing can begin. And that's when we can really get the help that we need. But some of us, our pride gets in the way. Some of us, our past gets in the way. Sometimes for us, our arrogance gets in the way. And we're like, you know what? I got this. I don't need other people. But there's no way you can grow with a personality like that. You have to begin to truly open yourself up. And you have to realize that your issues are not any different than other people's issues. And let me just do a a poll real quick. Wherever you're at, whether you're watching online, you can give me a thumbs up to each one of these statements. Scottsdale Mechanicsville, I just want you, if you're comfortable, raise your hand if you agree with these statements in your life because I want you for a minute to realize that you're not alone, okay? Listen to these statements. If you can agree, just raise your hand where you're at, okay? How many of you have something going on right now in your life that you're having a hard time with managing or handling by yourself? Real quick, look around the room. Look at that. You thought you were the only one. Huh? We all got issues. Okay, let's continue. Let's try another one. How many of you made a mistake in your past? All y'all better be raising your hand. If you're not raising your hand right now, we need to talk after church because I need to know the truth about how to handle life better. We've all made mistakes, right? Guess what? Ain't none of y'all perfect. Ain't none of y'all have it all together. So guess what? We can all be free to say we're all messed up, right? We all need help. The Bible tells us that all of us have fallen short of God's grace and glory, and that's why we need him, and that's why we need each other. All right, y'all like, this is really awkward, Trey. One more, ready? Can we do one more? 
How many of you would like to get to a better place in your life before this year finishes? Wow. Look around. Look around. You see, when we realize we're not the only ones, it frees us to be able to share and open up to others. Because none of you are perfect, even though you try to pretend to be when you go to work or you're in the grocery store or you're with other people. But you, but you can stop pretending now. All right? Like, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. You got walls. I got walls. We got issues. You got issues. We're going to be all right. But we can't deal with these things by ourselves. That's why the Bible instructs us to, to put these people in our lives so that our lives can be better. You need good friendships. I need good friendships. We need community together. It's not good for us to be alone. I'll share this story with you. As my, my wife and I, we lead a small group here at Atlee. We've been doing it for a few years. And usually it's with couples or, you know, she'll lead a women's group or I'll lead a men's group or something like that. But during the pandemic, uh, we decided to lead a group online. And uh, it was weird because we missed people and wanted to be around people, but we put our kids to bed at night and we'd all gather together on the computer and talk and hang out together. And the first few weeks, let me just say, were really weird, right? We're trying to like talk to each other and connect and uh, not many of us were sharing because some of us didn't know each other in the group, but some of us knew each other. So we're trying to figure out like, how much do I share? How much do I not share? Can I really trust these strangers? Can I not trust these strangers? And about halfway through the group, I remember throwing out a question to the group and just said, hey, well, you know, what are we all currently struggling with? And it was so cool. One by one, each person in our group started to share. And this was online. I'm like, wow, how amazing is this? And listening to all these people's stories and all the things that they were facing. And as we went around the, the circle on the computer and then it got back to us, I was like, wow, guys, thank y'all so much for sharing. Let's move on to the next question. And someone in the group like interrupted me. And I was like, hold on, who's the leader of this group, right? I can move on whenever I want to. And this person had the audacity to throw out this to me. They said, well, Trey and Kirsten, what are y'all currently struggling with? And I'm like, this is not how this works. I ask the questions, you give the answer, we move on, right? But in that moment, I realized it's easy for me to put people at arm's length. And it's easy for you to put people at arm's length. It's easy to ask the questions. It's harder to answer the questions. And I'm looking at my wife and I'm like, all right, what do we share? You know, like, well, let's start down the list. <laughs> and I look over at her and she's tearing up. And uh, people in our group didn't know that we had just moved here recently. And we were going through everything, moving in and not really knowing many people. And my wife um, was getting our son signed up for all these different therapies that he needed. Um, he had trouble walking and we had to buy these really expensive braces to put him in. And we, we didn't ever expect that he'd have to wear those in order to walk better. And then he was having some speech delays and we had to sign him up for speech therapy. And my wife literally each day of the week was doing all of these therapies and I was trying to go to work and all this during the pandemic. And my wife is just, I look over at her and she's crying and she's like, this is the first time I've shared this with anybody. I know it sounds so small, but this is what we're going through as a family. And it was so cool. Everybody in our group was so encouraging, was so helpful. And at the end of the night when we prayed, someone said, hey, can we pray for your son? We had never had anybody ask us that. And it was in that moment that we realized this group, we need it just as much as they need it. And it was so cool having somebody else be there to, to, to help us through that moment and to pray for us and to know that we were not alone. And while it's hard to open up, while it's hard to put ourselves out there, while it's so hard to be vulnerable with people, I want you to listen to what James says again. Because here's the phrase, I say it often here at Atlee, but I believe that it's so true. In order for us to heal, we have to be real. In order for you and I to find true healing, we have to be real. We have to be willing to open up. We have to be willing to share. We have to tear down these walls, tear down these bricks one by one, letting God and letting other people in so that we can get better. 
And so if you want to be healed, if you want to get better, this is how it starts for us. James 5, 16 tells us this again. Let's listen to this verse. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. You and I, if we're going to get better in community with each other, if our lives are going to see the healing that we want, we have to be willing to open ourselves up more, tear down those walls of the past. And may I just say this, for some of you, maybe your walls are a lot bigger and a lot more uh, vibrant than others because of things that you've experienced in your life. Maybe you have some tragedy from your past that you need to work through. And I'm not saying that these things will completely work. I know they'll help. But for some of you, you need to know that it's okay to go seek professional help today and to get the healing that you need in order to let people in again. There is nothing wrong with that. If anything, we encourage it here for you to get the help that you need because we know how important it is once we are able to get the healing that we need for God to begin to work in and through our lives more and more And that's what allowing other people in does for us. So today, can we do something together? Can we stop hiding behind our walls? Can we stop hiding behind our past shame and our pain and things that we've experienced? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the same person at the end of this year. I want to be different. And I know we all go through stuff. We all have things we're facing. We all have walls that we built, but these are not helping us anymore. You and I need to come to a place where we can let God in and we can let other people in so that we can be the people that God ultimately created us to be. I'm done with the hiding. I'm done with the walls. I want something different. And I know this is hard. It isn't easy stuff to do. And that's why the band's gonna come out and play one last song for us. And I wanna read you the lyrics of this last song because I believe God can help you with whatever you're facing today. The lyrics of the song go something like this. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. And so whatever you're facing today, whatever wall you have, whatever's holding you back from being in relationship and getting the help that you need, I pray over the next few moments as you listen to this song that you realize that you don't have to do it alone that God wants to help you. He wants to give you the strength to overcome your past. He wants to help you trust again. He wants to help you put the right people in your life so that you can get the help that you need and tear down the walls that are holding you back from the future that God wants to have for you. And so I just wanna pray for you for a moment. And then I just want this song to be your prayer today. You can stand and sing it. You can sit and reflect. Whatever you wanna do, just have this next few moments between you and God. And maybe for the first time, let God into those places that you've been struggling with for a while. And maybe think about the people that could be your safe place as you leave here today. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for this safe place that we get the opportunity to come to each week. Lord, today I know many of us deal with a lot from our past. God, we have a lot that holds us back from really diving into friendship and relationship with people. But Lord, I love your simple reminders today is that when we come to eat with each other, when we pray with each other, we can find the power, the hope, and the healing that we've been needing. And so today, God, wherever we find ourselves, may we let you into those places and let people in as well so that we can see you do the work that only you can do. Speak to us now. Allow us to hear from you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much again for stopping by. If you have any questions or would like to get connected here at Atlee Church, we would love to help or serve you any way that we can. And if God is doing something awesome in your life, we'd love to hear about it. You can email us directly at stories at atleechurch.org. And if you would like to support the ministries here at Atlee financially, you can go to our website and click the top tab, Give, and that helps us continue to get these messages out there and make a difference in the lives of so many. 
Well, thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you again next week.